but it doesn't mean that the Lord listens more to the one who can speak in tongues than the one who can't. No, no. I can, I prefer, I am more comfortable praying in English. My mother is more comfortable praying in her mother tongue. Another person is more comfortable praying in French. It doesn't mean one is being heard more than the other. No, it is whatever you are comfortable to have a relationship with God. So prayer, number one, is a language. So today I want to talk to you about the sound code of our prayers. How do we emit the sound code of our prayers? What is it that is so important? So prayer is also teachable. Do you have prayer is teachable? Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Do you agree? That's what the word of God says. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Pray our father who art in heaven. Now I want us to concentrate in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1. Let us start from verse 1. The Bible says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't have love, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Wait there. So the Bible says, the Bible is talking to us about the excellence of love. The excellence of love. So... I want to give you key number one, the key to the sound code of your prayer is love, is love. Love is a language. Prayer is a language. The Bible says, I will read it again in Amplified, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love for others, growing out of God's love for me, then I have become only a noisy gong. You've just become a drum. So that means that whenever I pray, I have to pray with love. Am I praying out out of a place of love? Many people, and that is why the Bible says, you ask, but you ask amiss. We pray and our prayers are not being answered because how are you praying? There's somebody who will pray and say, God, I met with my schoolmates. One is driving, one is married. Look at me, Lord. Give me the same or I die. Or if you're not giving me, take away the other persons as well. It happens. So that we are the same. It happens. I mean, what sort of prayer is Mm. that? Another person will pray out of fear. Mm. Lord, I don't have rent. I'm going to be kicked out tomorrow. And you say all the negative things. All the the negative things. (laughs) Thinking that you are trying to bring God into your emotions, to feel your... The pain that you are going through, that is a prayer of fear. So, is your prayer coming from a place of love? Does love control your prayer life? When you come before the Lord, what is, what is your driving force? You should always ask yourself, am I anxious? So, am I coming to God with fear? with anxiety? Am I angry? So I'm coming to God to tell on my husband, he did this to me today. Yesterday he did this. Now he has done this. So that is anger. You're bringing bitterness before the Lord because the sort of prayer I teach, I mean, by the grace of the Lord, I have been, last year we celebrated 10 years of marriage with my husband, Prophet Joel. So I believe I have a little bit, I I am allowed, if more so, just a little bit to teach people about marriage. I tell married women who are going through difficult times that it's not going to, 
never ever go before God and tell on your husband. The moment you said yes, I mean, you have locked yourself in. There is no way out. There is no saying he's done this, he's done that. But I believe that only God can change the heart of man. Only God can correct the heart of man. So it is better rather than fighting. Now we have deviated a little bit. Instead of fighting and saying you did this, you did that, and now you've done this, go on your knees. Handle that situation on your knees, but do it from a place of love. I am hurting in this situation that has happened. Lord, correct both of us. Because you could also be in the wrong. You could also be that you did something that made him react that way. Correct both of us. Grant us humility that we will come out of a place of ego. That we will talk about this, my husband and I. That you will correct him to know where he's wrong as much as you correct me where I am wrong. Mm. But not crying, bitterness. Yes, Miss Rachel, you have a question for me. Uh, just on that point, yes. uh, I wanted you to maybe emphasize on uh, uh, telling on your husband to God. Like, is it addressing the issue while praying? What exactly do you mean? You're going to make us deviate even much more. <laughs> but I will touch on it just a little bit. It is not, I mean, you cannot... This is the person that God has given you to walk with you this journey of life. So you can only, it doesn't matter what he has done to you. You can only come to God to pray for him from a place of love. Wow. Lord, correct him where he's wrong. Help us both. I see that maybe there's an issue in the way he's dealing with this matter. But I pray, O oh Lord, that you shall show us both the way, both of us. And the husband will just come to you and say, I was wrong. I think I need guidance. You can help me with this decision rather than fight back and forth. It is always better. It's that simple. It is that simple. <laughs> when the Lord gives the guidance mm. to the other person and humbles the other person mm. rather than you trying to show that it is you that is right. Now, let's go back to... That's some wisdom right there. To, to what we were talking about. Continue for me on First Corinthians cha 13. Chapter okay. 13. Let's go to verse 2 verse now. Two. The Bible says, mm -hmm. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all, all of God's secret plans, and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains... Mm -hmm but didn't love others, I will be nothing. Wow. I will what? I will be nothing. I will be nothing. So you could have faith. You could come to God and pray a prayer of faith. You could have all these things where you're, you're a giver. Gift of prophecy. That's Gift of prophecy. Says. You are a prophet. Mm. But there is not love in your heart. You're doing nothing. The Bible says it very clearly. I'll read it in Amplified. And if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand all mysteries and possess all knowledge, and if I have all sufficient faith, all sufficient, sufficient faith, faith, so that I can remove mountains, but do not have love, that means reaching out to others. I am nothing. As long as you don't come to God in prayer with love. Now, the prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, what is the prayer? It started with our Father. That means our. Jesus didn't say my Father. He's only my Father. Yeah, and he could have. Yeah, because he was his Father. That's true, yeah. He said our Father. So he was teaching them, most importantly, unity. Mm. Unity in the body of Christ. You know, does your prayer have a connection? Because our Father means you are building a personal relationship with the person you're talking to. Our Father. You know, many a times... 
And I'm talking about, I'm teaching you the key of praying from a place of love. Sometimes we have people in church who, like Elijah, the Lord rebuked him for saying that I am the only prophet. The Lord said, no, you are not. I have this much kept away just for me. So sometimes we have people who believe they are the biggest givers in the house of God. I am the one who keeps giving for cleaning. I'm the one who keeps giving. They keep asking me to give. There are people who think they're the ones who serve most in church. I'm always in church. I'm always doing this. I'm always cleaning. I mean, that is selfishness. So even when you go before the Lord, you are emitting selfishness. Because I, I have always, I also help the finance department. And I tell people, whenever we have partners meetings, trust you, me. There is always someone who is giving more than you. The difference is that you do not know them. Yeah. Is that they don't go announcing that I'm giving, I'm doing this. There is always someone, a silent giver, who is giving more than you're giving. I tell workers the same way. There is someone who gives their time more than you're doing. Who is serving God silently with all earnestly more than you're doing. So unity, our father, is there a relationship that you're trying to build when you call upon the name of God? When you say our father, is there unity? The prophet of God has been teaching us, do not forsake the gathering of brethren. When you gather together, is it, are you praying from a place of love? The way we have fasted the 21 days, we are fasting for the settlement of the church of God. Are you believing together with your fellow brothers? Are you believing for the church of God? Or is it always me, me, me? Oh, Lord, help me. I'm struggling in this place. I have this problem. My family is this. Are you praying from a place of love? Let us go on with the, with the scripture. If I gave everything I have to the poor... And even sacrificed my body, mm -hmm. I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, mm -hmm. I would have gained nothing. Wow. I love that. Wow. I absolutely love that. If I give all my possessions, this is what I was talking about. People who say, I'm the one who gives the most. If you give all of your possessions and feed to feed the poor, mm. and if you surrender your body to be burnt, but you do not have love. You've gained nothing. It does me no good at all. You have gained nothing. You are doing, it is zero work that you're doing. Absolutely nothing. Now, I will talk to you about three types of love. The same way we have three types of languages. We have the earthly language. That is the language that we speak, your mother tongue. Yeah. French, English, Swahili, that is the earthly language. We have the spiritual language, that is, it could be the angel of, the, the language of angels and the language of demons. Because demons also have a language. Do you believe that? Yes. That is the spiritual language when you speak in tongues. And then we have, no, 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 that is the, the, the language of angels and the language of demons. Then we have the godly language. That is when we speak from a place of love. When we pray from a place of love, that is when we come before the Lord and talk, speak in tongues, we are communing with God. Those are the three types of languages. Now, I want to talk to you about the three types of love. Now, we have the earthly love. The earthly love. The earthly love is your husband and wife kind of love. The love that you have here on earth, which... The earthly love is also guided by God. It can also be guided by the enemy. Yeah. If, if, if you're not, you know, sometimes zeal. There is a zeal. Sometimes you see people in church. They have prayed so much. They believe they're in the church. But the zeal has got them to bring in demons. They have started addressing demons in the name of zeal. 
I summon you. I, I hear the people who even summon demons. I'm like, even at, 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 at the place where I am, I've never had prophet summon demons. I've never, I mean, I want nothing. Even watching horror movies, I just don't want anything. I don't, I, I don't play with this demon, yeah. the, the devil. I don't play with it. I could watch something that could usher me into a realm yeah. that I'm not ready for. Yeah. So I, I don't play those kind of games. So <laughs> earthly love, yeah. that is the number one love. The number two love is demonic love. There is a demonic love. I have never heard of that. I will tell you about it. It is in the Bible, demonic love. And the third love is the godly love. Three types of love. So even as much as you're loving, as much as you're praying with love, know what kind of love are you bringing in. So I'll talk to you first about the earthly love, which I have said it is the love that you share as husband and wife. It is the love that you give to your children, to your mom, to your dad, to your parents. That is the earthly love. Now, let's talk about the demonic love. Second Samuel chapter 13 from verse 1. And then we will go back to Genesis. Now, we're talking about the rape of Tamar. I want you to read it to me slowly by slowly. Start from chapter 1. Okay. Now David's son Absalom had a beautiful sister named Tamar. And Amnon, her half-brother, fell desperately in love with her. Now, number one, you see there, fell desperately. Desperately in love. Desperately in love. Okay, let's go on. Amnon became so obsessed with Tamar that he became ill. Now, the second thing you see there is obsession. Mm. Love that has obsession. Yes. Obsession is not a very good word and it's not a very good thing. Yes. So you've seen the man has fallen desperately, desperately. in love. Mm. I mean, a love that is desperate. That is, yeah. I mean, the first thing is already not good. You yeah. cannot be falling desperately in love to someone you have not met, you've not spoken <laughs> to, you, you don't know their character. Yeah. Number two, we've seen obsession, okay? Yes, till he became ill. Mm. I tell you, this is <laughs> love that is bringing sickness Imagine. already. Wow. Okay? She was a virgin, and Amnon thought he could never have her. Okay, go on. But Amnon had a very crafty friend, his cousin, Jonadab. He was the son of David's brother, Shimea. One day, Jonadab said to Amnon, What's the trouble? Why should the son of a king look so dejected morning after morning? So Amnon told him, I am in love with Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. Well, Jonadab said, I'll tell you what to do. Go back to bed and pretend you're ill. So there again you see love that has lies. Mm. There is lies already. Mm, there is pretension. Mm. There is hypocrisy. Yeah. There is deceit. Mm. And right before that, mm. there is a place where we have seen last. The Bible says she was a virgin. virgin. Yeah. And Amnon thought he could never have her. So he is desperately in love. But in his heart already there is lust. Because it's not that I, I could just marry this woman. She could be my wife and we could be happy together. No, she's a virgin. Mm. I will not have her. There's lust already. Yeah. Okay, let's go on. That's true. Mm. We've seen lies. We've seen yeah. pretension. We've seen lust. Last. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you what to do. Go back to bed and pretend you're ill. When your father comes to see you, Ask him to let Tamar come and prepare some food for you. Tell him you'll feel better if she prepares it as you watch and feeds you with her own hands. So Amnon lay down and pretended to be sick. And when the king came to see him, Amnon asked him, Please let my sister Tamar come and cook my favorite dish as I watch. Now, there you're seeing another thing. Parental dishonor and disrespect. Yeah. Parental disrespect. Because he's ready, he's lying to the father yeah, yeah. in order to get something. At all costs. 
parental. This is love that has all these things. A love that has parental dishonor and disrespect. I'm talking to you about demonic love. Okay, let's go on. Then I can eat it from her own hands. So David agreed and sent Tamar to Amnon's house to prepare some food for him. When Tamar arrived at Amnon's house, she went to the place where he was lying down so he could watch her mix some dough. Then she baked his favorite dish for him. But when she set the serving tray before him, he refused to eat. Everyone, get out of here, Amnon told his servants. So they all left. Before we go on, now parents, allow me to talk to parents for a few minutes. If you are a parent, there is a mistake that parents do where I totally disagree with this thing called sleepovers. Oh, tell me Those about things it. are yes. dangerous. Very. It is bad. And as a parent, my spiritual father has taught Papa and I Prophet Joel and I, that when we go before the Lord, we are answerable. The Lord will judge us how we raised our children. He will not judge us about our parents. The number one thing we were told about our parents is to honor your father and mother. There is already a gift that comes with that, so that you may live long. The Lord has already told you, as long as you honor them, you will live long. So the Lord will never stand before you and judge you because of your father and mother. But your children, the Lord will judge you. The Lord gave you these children for you to care for them. Now, when you take your child, I believe even an uncle, an auntie, anyone, I don't agree with it. I don't allow my children to go anywhere for sleepovers. And that was the same. That is the way I was raised as well. I was never allowed to go anywhere because the world has become so wicked. It has become so wicked. If we as parents cannot protect our children, then who else can do it? And if a child, your own child comes to you and tells you, mom, dad, this has happened to me. It doesn't matter if it is true or lies. Investigate it Pull out your child and show love to that child. Yeah. If it's school, if it, was, if it is whatever, let's not raise our children the way we were raised. Very hard. Yeah. You will keep on going. You will do this. You, yeah. No. We have to show love. We have to protect our children from this wicked world. Now, let us go on. That's a very important <laughs> stopover, mom. <laughs> I think we'll, we'll need to come back to talk more on that. Because, Definitely. Woo, Okay, so where were we? Uh, uh, 12. Yes. Uh, must no, be let's 10, go to 10. 10, yeah. Yeah. Then he said to Tamar, now bring the food into my bedroom and feed it to me here. So Tamar took his favorite dish to him, but as she was feeding him, he grabbed her and demanded, come to bed with me, my darling sister. I mean, you could see David thought this is the brother. Oh, very honest. Very honest. He, the brother could never do anything to this young girl. But the, him trusting his own half-brother. Yeah. And this is what went on to happen. Let us go on. No, my brother, she cried. Don't be foolish. Don't do this to me. Such wicked things. Now, the love already is wicked. Yeah. Are we seeing the word wicked Extremely in the word of wicked. God? The love is already wicked. Yeah. This man in the beginning said he fell desperately in love. So there's the word love, but there's still lust, there's still obsession, there's still wickedness, there's lies. still lies, there's still parental dishonor. dishonor. Okay, let's go on. Oh, she even said such wicked things aren't done in Israel. Exactly. Where could I go in my shame? There's shame. And you will be called one of the greatest fools in Israel. Please, just speak to the king about it, and he will let you marry me. 
you see, now this is, again, I talked to the marriages of, they, they have a name, what do they call it, come we stay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you take someone's daughter, the, the, the woman is even telling him, let's do this the right way. Yeah. Let's try and build this love the right way. Yeah. You could talk to my father. I'll talk to him for you so that you could just marry me. Let's not do this thing. You could just wait. Now, you take someone's daughter. You enter the house. You live with someone's daughter. You have not gone to see the parents. You have not. That is dishonor. You've not gone to pay dowry. You have not gone to honor this woman that you love so much to their parents, but you keep on using the woman, keep giving me children, keep cooking for me. And even these relationships where a man tells you, come to my house and cook for me, in the name of what? That is the question we have to ask, in the name of what? So that what can happen? Uh, we don't have people who want to clap today, eh? I'm so like, that, I've, I've that not had any clubs since we started. <laughs> Are we enjoying the word of God? You guys don't want good advice, eh? Parents, <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever allow it that you go, even to the young ladies, single that you go ladies. to someone's house, the single ladies, you go and start washing clothes. I mean, know your worth. <laughs> Woman, you are worthy. You Amen. are not, I mean, Amen. it is only in marriage that I allow you to go and start washing clothes with your hands. If he so much as needs his clothes to be washed, he could buy a washing machine. I mean, life is so easy now. And that's, this is what I, I could tell someone, you, you want your clothes washed, I could help you go buy a washing machine. We can choose one together. You, Mama, the language normally is, utakuja kunipikia lini kwangu. Oh, my word. I have really terrible answers for such things. I mean, Teachers. terrible answers that could make someone never call you back again. Please teach us this if, answers. If there's any date that needs to happen, we could do it in restaurants. We yes, have chefs please. that can cook. If you really want us to come to your house and cook, we could get... Nowadays, we have chefs that could charge you very little money to come and cook for you for one day, right? <laughs> We have a chef that could come and cook for you for 3,000, 4,000. We That's could get a chef. Mm. And we can all sit in the dining room and we can eat as the chef <laughs> puts the food before us. I don't think you need to go and... Can you see the topic people love? I, I can see. There must I, be a gap there. <laughs> I think the next Wisdom Nuggets, we need to talk about this. Never allow a man to take away your worth. Because he's slowly taking away your worth. He is. By allowing him to take you to his house, even for that one night that you go and spend there. Cooking and washing. Now, I will t I we will talk about that right after this. Let okay. us go on. But Amnon wouldn't listen to her. And since he was stronger than she was, he raped her. Then suddenly, Amnon's love turned to hate. What? Repeat that again. Amnon's love turned to hate. So this is a man who lasted on this woman so much. And as soon as he slept, you see those women who come and tell you, as soon as I slept with him, he doesn't love me anymore. He stopped Stop calling, back. he stopped texting. The Bible is already telling you that that's the way it goes. I usually say the, the word of God has every secret, everything you would want in this life. The Bible is already, this is the son of a king, let alone you. The son of a king who has just slept with a virgin. Oh my. And the love has gone. And the love has turned. No, it has not gone. Oh, it has turned, turned into, hate. into hate. Let us go on. And the Bible says, and he hated her. Even more than he had loved her. Oh, my word. What oh, my this? word. Would you call that demonic love? Extremely demonic. From the word go? Yeah. Would you call that demonic love? Yes. That is demonic love. Yeah. And that is the love. That is why the generation we are in, many people are crying, I want marriage. 
I want marriage. I can't get marriage. I'm looking for marriage because there is no more godly love. Doing things the right way before the eyes of the Lord. Because this generation has been taught that unless you sleep with a man, a relationship cannot be built. It is a lie from the pit of hell. A lie of the devil. Unless you accept to be... To go for a test drive. Thank you for that. A man is not going to marry you. I mean, that's okay. Let's move on to, this, to, the, next, to the next car. You are not doing no test drive with my car. Amen. Yeah, let's, let's move on to the next developers. This is... Now, let me put this. Let me put this huge Bible down. Now, this is a key. This is love. I'm talking to you about demonic love. This is a love that drives many of us. We are driven by demonic love, evil love. The enemy drives you to hate another person that even when you go before the Lord in prayer, you are emitting demonic love. You tell yourself you have love, but you don't. How you treat others in church, you are emitting demonic love. How you serve in church, you are emitting demonic love. Now, let's go on to the next love. I think they're about to get us out of here, Miss Rachel. The next love is godly love. Let's talk about godly love a little bit. We can, we, we're going to come back to this, even if not today. There is a love that the Bible tells us. Let us go back to 1 Corinthians. I want you to read 1 Corinthians. Sorry, where were we? 1 We're in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13. Let us go back to that. Where did we stop? Okay, let's start from chapter 1 as we go on. Okay. No, chapter uh, no. 13, verse 1. Verse 1, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Mm -hmm. If I had the gift of prophecy... And if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I will be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Now, we are talking about godly, godly love. love. This is what godly love is. Read for me. Okay. Love is patient. Godly love is number one what? Patient. Patient. And kind. Kind. Love is not jealous. Love is not jealous. Or boastful. Number four is boastful. Or proud. Or proud. Or rude. Or rude. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, godly love is just, it is amazing. Yeah. So when you're rude to your leader, to your fellow worker, That's you're emitting voice. what? Demonic, demonic love. love. <laughs> if you're boastful, if you're proud, I give better than everyone in this house. I serve better than everyone in this house. Your demonic. love is what? Demonic it's love. Demonic. If you're mm. not patient, if you're not patient or kind. Now, there's another love that I have seen that is a love that is we seem to believe that it is love, but I tell you it is not love. Christians now, I, I had someone, someone called me the other day and told me, Mom, your ushers think that they are deputy Jesus. I was like, oh my goodness. I, I never knew there is such a thing. So there is a love where we believe that because we are born again, 
We believe that we live a pure life. We believe that we come to church. We can judge other people. So if someone comes into the house of God, maybe, I mean, I have a very dear friend of mine who I love. She loves the Lord, but she still drinks alcohol. So she comes to church reeking of alcohol, and an usher or a member or someone will say a mean word to them. Like, you couldn't come in or don't sit here. Or better still, someone comes in. They really wanted to be in church. They were somewhere else yesterday. And they come in with a dress that doesn't look very nice or is revealing in some kind of way. And he's told, no, you cannot sit here. Go sit at the back. I mean, that is, I, I tell you, that is demonic love. Because you're pulling people away yes. from church. A church is a hospital. This is a place where people come to find love, come to find healing. Why are you judging another person? How do you know? And that lady, I love her so much. She right now has, she was born again at one point, was coming here, loves Papa so much. The love she has received from Papa and anytime she comes, I receive her the way she is. Sometimes she comes, she's taken cocaine, can barely even see. But she wants to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah, you let them be. And she has been attacked so much by the people in the church that she has nowhere else to go. My goodness. So learn how. Even yourself, you are not all holy before you are the person that you are right now. Learn how to accept other people. That's true. With love. It does not uh, it does not demand its own way. Wow, you see what mm. I was talking about? Exactly. It does not demand its, its own, own way. way. So because I'm a leader, because I'm a I want church to look a certain mm. way. I want people to sit a certain way. I want mm. people to dress a certain way. For it to be the church that I want it to be my own way. My, yeah. Okay. My way or the highway. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. That's another thing where it would take me back to earthly love. Mm. Love that is from marriage. Mm. Your husband has done something but you choose to not forget you will keep reminding him and reminding God. Remember he did this to me the Fif other day. Fifteen years ago. He did this to me. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I used to be like that, but the Lord has <laughs> delivered me. I am, I am delivered. <laughs> I used to remember he didn't hold my hand when we were walking in the mall the other day. And Lord, you know I don't like that. He needs to hold my hand. Love does not keep a record of wrong. Mm -hmm. It does not rejoice about injustice, mm -hmm. but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Wow, praise the Lord. Can we celebrate Amen. the word wow. of God? Isn't the word of God so amazing? So yes. Mm -hmm. wow. Love never gives up. Whoa. Never gives up. This is godly love. Godly love. That's how you don't give up on someone. Yeah. I mean, someone who you know, is struggling with their faith, with their Christianity, but they keep going back. They keep going back. But you choose to say, I'm not going to give, to give up on this person. That is love. Because most people give up. Yes, they do. They're like, hey, for how long? Yes. Nitashinda, I, yeah. I keep following you, keep going to the club, you keep <laughs> doing this. Yeah, I'm, I'm just done with you. <laughs> love. Godly never love. Never gives up. Never gives up. Mm -hmm. Never loses faith. Wow is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Wow. I just love wow. the word of God. Mm. It endures. Let us clap for the Lord. <clears throat> Godly love never loses faith. Godly love is always hopeful. Yeah. The Bible says that a man without hope is as a dead man. You're just as, you're dead. As long as you don't have hope in you. Hope in Christ. Hope in the fellowship. 
that you gather together with your church family. A love that is not hopeful and endures through every circumstance, even in the difficult, you're still enduring. Even when the times are hard in your marriage, you're still enduring. You're emitting godly love and not demonic love. Because in marriage, you can also emit demonic love by choosing to be judgmental, by choosing to do everything that is opposite of what this verse 4 says. Then that means you are emitting. Did you learn something today? Did you learn something today? Allow us to finish here today. And we can take it up again. This is part one of uh, <laughs> 20 parts. Thank you for allowing me to, to be a blessing to you.